we actually made our own pinhole camera, which was like the first, you know, type of camera. So that was kind of mesmerizing to me. It was very interesting. Um, and I did some darkroom work with an actual film camera. So we started with that and it just became, you know, second nature. So today is January 29th, 2021. Who are we speaking with? Uh, Yulia here. Hello. Hello, Yulia. Um, we met, what, what year did we meet? 20? 2000. 2008? Yeah, 2007? I was going to say, yes. Around then. Uh, Yulia is a fantastic uh, photographer. Uh, and today we're going to cover her images and then talk about your involvement in the electronic music scene. So we're going to start with your favorite 20 images. And for each image, can you talk about the, the photo, uh, the location, the party? Just give us some context for the image and wh why it's special for you. So let's start with this first one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this one here is actually from 2018. And um, it was taken at Evan Gardner, um, Brooklyn Mirage here in New York. And actually, well, Evan Gardner space because um, the Mirage is coming out more outside. Um, so I kind of love this one because just I think of the geometry that it has, you know, and I think uh, electronic music kind of has that aspect to it, kind of mathematical, you know, ge geometry or, you know, something like that behind, behind the sound, behind the composition of the sounds. Um, this one was, uh, it was a Ben Clock show. It was actually called Photon. It was one of his new shows that he was kind of taking around US and Europe too. Um, yeah, so I think, and you know, of course, just the communication between the dancer and, and, and the DJ, just that kind of dynamic there, you know? And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the story behind this one. Cool. Now, this one is actually from the same event, just to follow it up with that. Um, also here, I think I just, it's, to me, it's kind of that communication between negative space and the um, consist, or not consistency, but just just the shape of, you know, of, of the crowd. Um, it actually doesn't have too many dancers. I mean, you have one hand there on the, on the left. But sometimes I think in, in, especially in techno, you have that um, slow moments or not slow, but just the buildup. And so, and I just, you know, I think also the, the primary color, the red is uh, the primary colors sometimes stand out. Um, and also this show, the photon show kind of focuses on um, not overwhelming amount of uh, stimulation, uh, more minimal. So I think it has that kind of minimalism behind it. Go to the next one. So this one here. This one is actually a Paradise Club, which opened not too lo not too long ago. It's um the brainchild of um, um Ian Schrager's uh, um, um, project, uh, actually together with some of the House of Yes team. So, which is you know it's of course a great combination. Um, it was uh, opened in Times Square, and one of his in um, Ian Schrager's. Uh, edition hotels. So here I just, you know, you have this person just kind of admiring the sound, you know, you have the speakers on each side of his hands and he's just kind of taking it in. Um, and so that's what I like about this. So let me go to the next one. Here we have um, just, you know, this dancer also just soaking in. You could almost think it's like kind of sunlight, but it's actually, of course, synthetic because it's that, of a dark club, um, but I would, you know, I guess it kind of spoke to me because I would find myself in those situations where I just lo love this, you know, the track so much that cl close my eyes, find my space, you know, um, and lose it like it goes in Danny Tanglia song. But um, yeah, this one was at um, at a club in Manhattan uh, maybe three years ago. It was actually for Bobble, which is one of the collectives that I uh, worked with for, for a year. It's a beautiful image. And then talk to us about your technique. Is the is the is the dancer aware that you're there? Are you dancing with her? Are you dancing away, long lens? Like, how do you mm -hmm. approach that image? Yeah, 
uh, he, yeah, it's so I would often find myself in this situation where in order for, for the person not to notice me, I would kind of maybe put my camera to the side for a second and just kind of like sway as well. Because <laughs> then once the person sees you kind of they, 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 they might change their appearance a little bit. But yeah, in this one, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, kind of snuck, snuck a little bit, snuck up to her. Um, and also it was, yeah, it was just that kind of drop of a song. So I think sometimes your, your sensation kind of shuts off. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that answers that question. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I zoomed in a little bit and everything, but, um, this one is from black market membership it was also a, a techno, um, a house, um, a music collective that did amazing events for, for many years. I worked for them for for some time so um, here just like the communication between you know the the, the audience well sorry the, well the individual and the and the crowd kind of being lost sometimes you know i think people go in groups and enjoy their time together but sometimes i think in this in, the, in this scene what you could do is just go by yourself and just enjoy the music you don't you know maybe sometimes your friend doesn't want to or you know just or you're having that kind of moment in your life so you just want to um take it in by yourself and it allows for that nobody's gonna judge you you know for for anything so here i think he was uh really enjoying the the sound and um this is an aerial shot on the right so i did um i think it was a camera on a remote shooting from the ceiling um so you have that totally kind of uh yeah aerial uh perspective so and the the left shot is shot with a strobe so there's a strobe um also attached you know a little bit far up Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. This one, um, one of my faves in terms of portraits of DJs, this is called Cox. This was like my, um, actually it was shot at Cielo when it was open. So a lot of uh, amazing memories from that one. It was a great set. It was just like a legendary night there because, you know, it's not a big space. It's not like huge. So it's so intimate, but yet he was bringing such a big sound to the rooms like really cool Beautiful. and you know so there's a lot of shadows so you can't see everything but i think it you know kind of like the mystery there a little bit beautiful let me see this one is um so this one i just like the energy and also just the togetherness of it so you know this was a, a governor's island i think it was a dance here now um festival um it was by benny son and rob fernandez it was, it was her, 2012, I believe. So we have two couples, you know, of, of different races, different, um, you know, we have a, a um, uh, different, you know, orientation. So I kind of like that, that togetherness here. We can just, you know, it's, uh, it's beautiful. That unity there. Yeah. Now we have, oh, sorry. This one is shot. Uh, this was uh, an event by Bobo and this was, um, uh, uh, this was Black Coffee actually playing. Um, and it was right at the drop of one of his tracks. He was playing this like full on tribal set and everybody was just going insane. And, you know, it was, yeah, it's that kind of energy there. He was in uh, New York City as well in Dugal Greenhouse, especially like that. If you can see on the very um, bottom there, um, we have some great, because uh, this is very close to the booth. So, you know, you could really communicate with the DJ there. Uh -huh. yeah. This one is a shot of Nina, Nina Kravitz. Um, so I work with her for some time. And this one actually was at Resolute, uh, a Resolute event. It was in a warehouse in, in, in uh, Queens, actually. And here, you know, I just kind of like the, sometimes, you know, this was shot on purpose with a little bit of blur. Mm -hmm. And I had a, I think, a, you know, it was a blue flash on the side. So we have that kind of motion here. I think it's um, nice. It kind of goes, you know, I think with her, with the song, with the track that she was playing. So just kind of lost in that color and movement there. Love it. Okay. So this, 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 this is actually a person who was um, performing uh, and is performing. Um, so his name is Daryl Thorne. He uh, would perform at Babel's events. Babel is the, the music collective also doing events all around New York. Uh, very beautiful 
events, they would work with um, very talented teams. And this was um, his, his team. He would create the costumes. Uh, they were custom made, um, a really amazing stuff um, here. But I, you know, here we can't see his face, but you know, I kind of, he, he was also, he wouldn't always be on, on, on in, in front and center. So it's almost like he kind of wanted to focus more on the movement versus identifying you know, and uh, so it's also a bit of a mis mysterious uh, thing there, because and that's why exposed for for the for the surrounding versus the the face. Is this at Burning Man? No, actually, this is uh, in a in a club. Is um, Flash Factory, the one that uh, so close was on Twenty Seventh Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. These two dancers here. This was shot. Yeah, so they were kind of intertwined. This was a uh, I shot it very fast with a flash. So we had, this is a guy and a girl and they were just, you know, having a nice time together and just kind of getting lost a little bit. And so, you know, I like the, the uh, juxtaposition there between the two. You know, if you didn't know if it was a nightclub, it could be just two people talking or without talking, you know? Yes. That kind of thing. Yeah. This is um, shot from House of Yes. So I work with them as well for some time before the pandemic hit. Uh, but uh, this is actually Nikki Siano, which was really cool for me to photograph. I never photographed him before. Um, he was the resident for, you know, at uh, Studio 54. Uh, uh, and um, so it was, it was a disco house based set. So we have Anish Sapozhnikova on the on the top there, and and Kay Burke, which were the co-founders of, of of the venue. Um, a very such a unique space, you know. Um, so kind of, this is really yeah. And then the people, you know, everybody's enjoying it. Um, and then Nikki Siano is very focused. You know, you could see that he's paying attention to mm -hmm. how everybody's reacting to the music. Nice. Yeah. This one, so here, I, you know, I think sometimes I like the abstract, uh, um, the abstract behind behind the music, you know, yeah. just uh, getting, uh, again, you can't quite see people here and oftentimes you, you wouldn't because it's so dark, mm -hmm. um, uh, but then everybody's just joining it, joining in. This is, I think, was shot in Miami. That's awesome. This um, here is Victor Calderon on Governor, Governor's Island, sorry. It's a black and white festival. It was a two-day festival. Mm -hmm. And while well, Victor Calderon, it's, you know, it's one of the kings of, I guess, New York, you know, we have. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, that sound. This one is uh, Richie Houghton from Evan Gardner, he brought his close live show. So he was actually doing a live set for two hours live, uh, I guess, yeah. So the, the obviously electronic music, um, more techno based sound, um, really powerful. Uh, I had to actually, they, they really don't allow anybody on the stage because he had, it was a two, uh, two, two D, oh, sorry, two turntables right by him or not turntables, but the, the different uh, um, tools he was using on each side of him. And it was also hard, hard to kind of come close. So I was using, I think a telephoto here. Mm. And these are kind of victorious a little bit here. Just mm -hmm. ahead. I love it, beautiful. This one um, is from Martinez Brothers at One Oak. This was 2019, yeah. Uh, a lot of people at this event. They one of their tracks that they played that evening um, that night. I was like obsessed with it. Um, this is America with uh, Todd Terry remix and Louis Vega. I think. Oh okay. my god, so good. Really? Yeah, so this girl was like, on. I don't know if you ever heard that track. I have, I'm gonna Google it after we get. Yeah, I will have to send it to you. Yeah. And I think we are at. Let me just check my seventeen. This guy here, this, you know, to me kind of feels like this could be, I don't know, somewhere on Mars or something. You don't know where it is. There's like no, 
no um, walls or anything, which is what I kind of like about it. Sometimes, you know, you want to uh, perceive yourself on, 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 or I guess sometimes people wonder what it would be like to be some, you know, somewhere besides earth. But to me, it kind of gives off that feeling. We have this sun, which is actually just obviously a projector. Mm-hmm. But I love it. It's totally surreal, totally <laughs> out of space. Really. Yeah. Why not, right? Uh, this one is from a Resolute event. This is um, uh, shot, uh, the event was held at a church. So it was, it was no longer a church. Uh, it was, uh, you know, an abandoned space. Um, I forget the uh, story there, but they, it, they were able to use it. You know, they, they were renting it out for different things. So, but here, of course, we have this interesting like thing where we have the DJ up on the pedestal, you know, by the altar. Um, and everybody's sort of like uh, paying homage uh, to, to the music this way. Mm-hmm. Oh, this, this is, is nice. Carnival, Brazil. This is, Brazil. Um, this is uh, yeah, this is actually from the same, so this is this dancer, her name is Ch- Chavisma. So she uh, is uh, one of the, um, uh, the team members for Babel. Uh, the collective that they were doing these music events. So uh, this was, I think, uh, a Dennis Fair night. So they had Dennis Fair play the whole night, and um, she she was yeah she had this amazing uh, costume. It was also by Daryl Thorne the costume. Um, very talented dancer. The headdress is beautiful. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. It's like I was mesmerized. Yeah. Right, and we have, yes, yeah, so this here is somebody enjoying his time. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a Laurent Garnier event, and he was doing it, it wasn't, uh, was it live? It was uh, maybe seven years ago. Um, and yeah, so it was, it was a Laurent Garnier set, and um, it's about maybe 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was kind of that time I was kind of observing and just, you know, and the, the light was, you know, uh, he was bathing in this light. So I, I could not not pay attention to that and just snap this shot with the telephoto. Yeah, because I was pretty far back by the DJ. I was kind of like looking at everyone. Oh, sorry. Yep. So that's. Awesome. Thanks very much. When did you fall in love with electronic music? Um, let's see. So kind of goes back to, I mean, the first uh, DJ that I started following was Danny Tenaglia. I think he was the one who like introduced me to, to, to the, the whole experience. And I was um, 16, 17. So I was still in high school um, and yeah, first time I heard his set, it was in New York City. So it go, yeah, it goes back, goes back to them. Wow. Yeah. So the interview is gonna basically be two parts, one about electronic music and then one about photography. Okay. Uh, so we'll photography, then we'll go into electronic music. So from a photography perspective, um, what work influences you? Or whose work influences you? Um, from, okay, so from f- photo artists, from photographers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the first, yeah, the first person I think was Diane Arbus. Um, so she's a photographer um, uh, fr- from New York. And um, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, her, I don't know if you know, no, yeah, you know, know her. Well, very well, yeah. yeah. So she's one of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then why did you choose photography? I'm not painting, why not sculpture, why photography? Um, well, it was again starting with like high school. So we, you know, um, it was LaGuardia High School. So we we were experimenting with different types of cameras, and we actually made our own pinhole camera, which was like the first, you know, type of camera. So that was kind of mesmerizing to me. It was very interesting. Um, and I did some darkroom work with an actual film camera. So we started with that, and it just became, you know, second nature. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then talk about your gear. So when you go out and do a club shoot. Um, actually, let's take a step. When you do a club shoot, are you rolling solo? Do you work with the parties? Do you work with the venues? Are they? Are you? Are you shooting for your own? Are they hiring you? Like, how does that whole process come together? Right. 
uh so yeah they would be basically hiring i would do the work solo um if it's a very uh big event like a big festival then I, i'm you know i would get maybe a second photographer mm -hmm. but usually i would just do uh solo um and yeah it's been uh where the venue kind of hires you know they use it for their promotion they use it for you know and so i know i kind of in give my input on on um uh the, the visual aspect how to kind of you know uh not make it stand out but just read read the the energy of which you know it'd be the music collective uh traveling music collective or a venue and then yeah so kind of uh and so then it's when you, freelance best based work yeah gotcha and then when you're shooting like how many bodies do you bring how many lenses how do you navigate with that space how do you know what to bring right uh usually two cameras um unless yeah usually two just one for backup or one for to have a second lens on um uh you know telephoto 24 to 70 uh, which is kind of mid-range and a few others like 85 uh which has more of like romantic look to it um and let's see so it depends if i've shot at a space before sometimes i go there to see it beforehand if i've shot there before then i already know the you know how to go about it so or you know sometimes they send they i would ask for a plan to be sent or they send me the plan of the space and then i can see it so that's very helpful nice and then talk to us about um this is a very controversial question so forgive me okay. canon or nikon <laughs> <laughs> well i would have to say i'm a canon girl okay okay yeah. even though you're... no nothing against nikon but okay <laughs> No, it's, it's a very controversial question. So, <laughs> yes. um, and then talk to us about uh, your process or what tools do you use for post processing? Um, I would use Lightroom and um, Photoshop, you know, I kind of keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then talk to us about your photographic goals. Like, where do you want to go with this photography? Where do you see it going? Where would you like it to go? No, uh, you know, I think um, I just want to keep doing, you know, but documenting, you know, uh, sort of life people um, and be able to work with people who, you know, who who need the representation and I can help them to conceptualize things. And I just, I actually just want to keep doing that. Um, and I would only just like to, you know, uh, have a bigger team to, you know, so we can all kind of arrive at bigger, you know, bigger, uh, not bigger, but, you um, I'm just kind of make you know evolution happen so yeah that's what i kind of see for the future yeah and working with more people yeah from your perspective what makes a good picture stand out from the average hmm. i think it would be i think composition um lighting lighting is just so crucial uh uh be it uh, so, um uh, you know re real light natural light or you make that light happen um the subject matter and just you know if it has that kind of the impact you know how is the sh how are the shadows used how is negative space used um so i think kind of comes to that what's your intention like are you are you like when you go out to shoot do you have an intention in terms of are you look, looking to capture mood feeling lighting are you looking mm -mm. vibe yeah. like what's what's your intention like when you take a picture right yeah i think i think mood and atmosphere would be the first the first thing because that's that's what people come for and so it kind of just you're there you you know um and also just if we're if again if we're, we're talking when we're talking about nightlife uh shooting you know a music a music event it's i think it, it's a communication between this the music also and or what type of what time of night it is what you know i think it all kind of works together so the intention you know if it's kind of a a slower moment or if it's a build up towards something it could be somebody anticipating you could see sometimes people just anticipating that drop and that could be sometimes the best you know moment yeah so and then once it kind of breaks out then it's about action it's about maybe you know more of a sharp lighting more of, you know so the overall intention yeah would be to to document you know the not the nat natural state of things but i think the mood is the most you know the, the the most interesting thing, um, and the uh, personal personal mood of someone too could be could be co collective mood, could be a collective consciousness situation where, you know, that could be quite interesting. I've noticed that, or it could be an individual story. 
for from someone yeah how would you describe your photographic style hmm. i'd say you know i think it's photojournalistic with um you know kind of artistic portraiture i would say that and then when you're shooting for, you know, not for yourself, how do you deal with, uh, and how do you connect with difficult clients? Hmm. How do you navigate that? I think um, being very patient in a way and also helping them just understand what, what or me, me understanding what they need. So I think it's kind of that kind of mutual building that mutual understanding, which sometimes it's, it's a communication thing. So, yeah, I think, yeah, just trying to understand the needs. <laughs> I and mean, from a, from the world of photography, what are, what's the most rewarding about part about being a photographer? And then what would you say is, what do you like least about being a photographer? Hmm. Interesting question. Um, well, actually, since we, you know, we were just talking about, you know, different clients, sometimes it's um, in terms of the, the hard thing, sometimes it's, you know, you need to kind of break the ice, especially if it's a smaller type of shoot, I think, um, on both parts, you know, on the, uh, you kind of need that time. And sometimes that can, you know, that can be a little bit challenging, um, especially if you have a certain amount of time. So, but then you kind of just have to work, work through it, I guess. And um, oftentimes, yeah, it just takes, it just takes a little bit of extra time um and again that helps like when you uh, uh you know ha have that pre you know pre pre conversation um and while the rewarding thing is i guess you know it's a lot i i think just building those memories you know um i think this is a kind of a joy for for me and for for people who receive the, the photos you know, you, you are brought back to another moment that has been maybe, you know, not lost in time, but it's already passed, but you're able to kind of freeze that for, you know, it's documenting history. I think it's having that historic account, which is really cool to, to me. Um, so that's very rewarding. Yeah. Uh, and then talk to us about um, looking back. If you were to approach your photographic uh, career differently, what would you do differently? Knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Hmm. Let's see, you mean, so uh, from from the angle of, of kind of uh, the business, thing, of, of kind of building, the, or you mean? The uh, business perspective, like, oh, I wish I had contracts, you know, when I first started. Oh, or, I or is it like from a, an approach standpoint where it's like, oh, I wish I had started out bringing out lenses, you know, but was before I went out with one lens, like right. either or. Just like if you yes. learn what you know now, how would you approach your craft differently today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I would definitely say that in my like early 20s, I would definitely also probably didn't make contracts than I should have and, and doing them the right way. So maybe, you know, resourcing and doing more research, speaking with other people, like how do you build even though I didn't, you know, I did have templates, but it was just that kind of uh, maybe not being in, in some cases, not uh, having a good gold, gold, sorry, ultimatum, like in terms of, okay, so we need to, uh, you know, if we're talking practically like a certain, you know, let's say a deposit needs to be made. Although in, I think in different industries, it's, you know, nightlife industry, it's, it's often a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, I would say like just doing more research um you know and and speaking with other people who maybe have done it for for some time i mean um you know back then if some if you're starting out let's say so uh yeah i think uh in terms of that yeah um and not being able to or not being afraid to put your work you know i remember in the beginning i i I would only be very selective with, which is, I guess, a good thing. You know, you, you people are usually critical. Photographers are critical. Visual artists are critical of their work. Um, you know, but but not being afraid to to put the work out there, especially using internet right now. Uh, you know, and using all these all these social media outlets. Um, yeah, and just yeah, not being able to, not being afraid to put yourself out there. And what advice would you give the next generation of photographers coming after you? The the 16 year old Yulia who wants to be. <laughs> hmm. 
I would say um, being very diverse, you know, and just um, because uh, that's how you're going to arrive at, you know, at, at the thing that you're passionate the most about. So just try a lot of different things. Um, yeah. And just building your building your network. Uh, because right now, I think the, the things are changing a little bit. People are much more comfortable being in the virtual world. So definitely using more kind of the VR aspect for it. Yeah. That leads me to my next question. Talk to me about what do you see as a future of photography? Oh, that's an interesting question. I think um, it's definitely changing so much. Just the fact that, you know, the gear is getting much smaller now. Uh, people are using, you know, our like phones are so amazing. Um, so I think it, it will be going, you know, I think it will be becoming a hybrid, I think with VR, AR. Um, and I think video is very important. I think videography is a great tool. So I think it's all going to slowly start coming together. Um, I don't want to say that photography is going to be gone. I don't believe that. I believe, you know, concepts will never leave. You know, you, you're always going to have that. I think just photography is going to become a hybrid with something else. And what effect has COVID had on your work? Mm. Well, <clears throat> you know, I think that just the, the fact that, um, again, a big part of my work were was shooting um, events, working with venues, and a lot of venues have um, temporarily closed or, not, you know, and so um, and of course people are not holding gatherings, um, so you know, the impact is less work, um, but also you know just kind of adapting a little bit, finding new ways, finding different types of shoots, and I was as I was saying before, you know, a lot of portrait work. That's something that we can do safely. Um, and yeah, uh, so that's, yeah, that's them. And I think it's probably similar for a lot of people, but. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's take a broader concept. Now let's focus on the music, uh, electronic music. You talked about falling in love with electronic music in high school, Dana Tanaglia. Do you remember some of the first clubs you went to? Yes, it was ARC, which well, vinyl, but then it was ARC for a couple of years or for, I forget. I caught it when it was already changed. The name was changed to ARC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that was well that was the after that was spirit and which was in the place i believe of twyla i believe so mm. 27th street or no i'm sorry it was probably like a door over but i think it was the same street and then crowbar crowbar um and yeah those were those were the uh the spots so it's so funny you're bringing me back there <laughs> Good, those are some great memories. I actually have film photos, a few, just a few, because I was, you know, doing it for the school projects mm -hmm. and have these first color picked fo film photos from uh, Spirit. They were super blurry, but they were super cool. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to show you sometime. That's a throwback, throwback. Have you also shot at the Winter Music Conference as well? I've, oh. so I actually covered um, the Sunday School. Mm -hmm. That was uh, kind of, well, um, this is 2011. So it was, it was um, I was interning for, for AM New York. So it was actually kind of a pitch that I was doing with them for, for the newspaper. Um, and yeah, it was a two or three day event, you know, so people kind of left and went back. Um, and, you know, great, amazing music. They have, they have um, several floors. So we had, you know, a lot of, a uh, lot of diversity. And, and then ultra for, I think it was actually a Carl Cox event uh, or Carl Cox, you know, uh, segment at ultra, which is sorry, that's different from WMC. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's all it's basically right. Miami, Miami. Right, right, right. Yeah. Did you grow up? What, what, what kind of music did you hear on the house growing up? Like were your parents into music? Oh yeah. Yeah, they were. Um, you know, it was a lot of pop, but I mean, I was growing up in Russia and St. Petersburg. So, you know, we've had actually the, you know, kind of, let's say ATB, you know, like that, that kind of a uh, trancey, you know, and definitely Tiesto for sure, you know, was on the radio sometimes like remixes, um, a lot of retro, um, and just, you know, Russian, Russian type of music. So it was, it was not until here, but you know, 
actually no, I remember getting like these trans compilations uh, in 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 uh, in junior high school in, in Russia. But um, yeah, that was that was the surrounding. And have you have you uh, photographed electronic music events in Russia? No, I mean uh, not until you know maybe uh, yeah I did shoot like a small these experimental music. This is when I went back though maybe uh, six years. So that was already here, uh, kind of working. I feel you know I was affiliated with the, with the scene here. So when I went back there, I was interested. You know what's what kind of sound they're they're doing there. So it was uh, these live uh, abstract uh, type of music, kind of FX twinish sort of um, a few few small independent venues, um, yeah. But it was you know it was more of a documentary that I was doing for them. Gotcha. Uh, describe electronic music in one word for you. Energy. Explain. Although that's very limiting. I, uh, because, you know, well, you know, because of course you can have energy, right? Like for a human being, like energy, oh, uh, coffee, I need to be active. But then there is something like energy for life, right? So sun has energy, you know, like planet has energy. So it somehow comes, comes together, you know, because our brain needs, you know, it's, it's that kind of rhythm, you know? And I think another awesome thing um, about electronic music, I think is, if certain beat can start coincide with your heartbeat. And I think they were doing research studies on that. So that's that's where it becomes so um, interesting, I think, for, for, for us to experience that. Because kind of, you kind of become, become one with it. So maybe that's kind of how it comes together. I love that. Um, what's next for you, yeah? Next, next, next. Um, well, I'm doing um, these uh, portrait works for, for, for different people, you know, those who have now, because of the pandemic, have a little bit more time creating new music. Um, I've been doing these kind of concept shoots. Uh, and so we're, you know, for, um, it's different, different people, but um, it's coming kind of together as this result of people getting or having more time to focus on their inner voice, you know, and, and creating new music and um, some kind of, you know, we're building kind of visual uh, um, interpretation of that. So that's, that's exciting on the end, on that, on that end. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. Thank Photos you so much for having me. All right. Take care. Have a great weekend. You too. All right. Bye-bye.